Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this little coin purse on the scan and cut machine. Now I'm calling it a coin purse, it could be used for anything. It's about four inches by four inches, roughly, maybe a little bit smaller. It's fully lined, zip fastening and all the fabric was all cut with the scan and cut machine. Now this is some Disney um, fabric that's available from Maker Superstore dot com if you're interested but today i'm going to be using a different fabric but still disney and i'm going to be using the new fabric mat for the dx sdx series of machines and the new fabric auto blade so this mat only works with the machines that have the auto blade technology and you can see that these two go together because they've got the same colour on the top of the blade as it has on the bottom of the mat. So you know that you're using the right combination. In addition to that, I'm going to be using one of my fabric pens. Now I'm going to be using the air erasable pen. But the way that you know the difference is the fabric pens have this coloured strip around the top of them. The normal drawing pens don't. OK, and the blue one is water erasable and the purple one is air erasable. So I'm going to be using the water erasable one today with the original pen holder. And again, you know that this holder goes with this pen because there's a little hole in the top of this holder where you can put your cap while you're using the pen so i'm just going to insert the pen into the holder and then that's going to be ready to go so the other things that you're going to need if you want to follow along are two pieces of fabric that are at least five and a half inches wide by 10 inches tall this pink one here with the little mini mouse and the foxes and the twigs and thing is going to be the outside of my coin purse and the plain white piece is going to be the inside or the lining. Neither of these pieces of fabric have got anything at all ironed onto the back of them. They're just, so, you know, there's no iron on backing. They've not been stiffened, nothing like that. Literally, just as they came off the fabric roll, cut at five and a half by ten. You're going to need a zipper that's at least four and a half inches wide. I like to use continuous zips and I like to use a zip that's bigger. So it doesn't have to be a continuous zip. For this one, this was an old zip that I reused and this zip was about eight or 10 inches long and I just cut it off once I've you know, sewn it into place. This piece of zipper, just to give you an idea, is about eight and a half inches long. And I've just got little um, clover clips on the end of it just so that if I open the zip, I don't pull the zip right off the end. So that's all you're going to need. So as I said, for this design, I can't remember whether I said it at the beginning, but I am using an inbuilt pattern that's already in the machine. It's one of the basic shapes. I'm going to put my fabric onto my mat, obviously in the right orientation if there's a, a dis, you know a pattern on it, and I'm putting it pattern side down. So it's going to have wrong side up facing me. I'm just going to rub that down gently with my hand. Now, I don't think this has a right and a wrong side. So for the plain white piece, I'm just going to put that alongside it. And again, smooth it down just on the fabric with my hands. So I'm not trying, I'm not touching the rest of the mat with my hands because obviously I don't want to de, you know, de-sticky my mat. So once that's done, I'm just going to flip over to the machine and then show you what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to load this fabric mat into my machine. Take out my regular blade and I'm going to pop in the pen. I'm going to come into the basic shapes, into the basic shapes section and I'm going to scroll through the patterns and I'm going to find the pattern number BA A110, -A and that's this one here. 
I'm going to leave it at its default size and I'm going to say that I want four and then hit set. And that's put the four shapes on to the mat. So the first thing I want to do is go to edit, then go to the three red boxes, select the box on the right hand side, which selects everything on my mat. <clears throat> I'm going to say OK. <clears throat> I'm going to go to object edit with them all selected and I'm going to group them. And now I'm going to come to the rotate icon and I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees to the left. So they're the right way up. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to say OK. And with them all still grouped together, I'm going to come into the seam allowance. And I have my seam allowance set to a quarter of an inch. And that's by default, but you can change it here if you want to half or five eighths or into millimetres. But by default, I leave mine set at a quarter of an inch, which is the default setting. And I'm going to turn the seam allowance on and say OK. Now, I'm not sure how well you're going to see it on the screen, but the machine has applied a seam allowance to the four shapes. I'm going to ungroup them now because I've got them in the right orientation. So with the flat edge along the top, and I've got my seam allowance on. So I'm going to ungroup them and I'm going to say OK, OK again. And I'm going to do a background scan to scan the mat through the machine so that I can place the four shapes onto each piece of fabric. Now, you may not be able to see this very well on the screen, but I can. I'll try and zoom you in a little bit more. But basically, I'm going to drag two of the shapes onto the white piece of fabric and two of the shapes on to the pattern piece of fabrics. And I'm going to try and get at least one of the shapes so I can get Minnie Mouse's head on one of these pieces of fabrics. I mean, where she's positioned, she's literally right in the middle of my piece of fabric. So, you know, it's probably not going to work out perfectly. I can see that they both look now as though, you know, they're in the right place on the respective piece of fabric. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to say select and I'm going to say draw. Now, obviously, I've already got my pen in the machine, as I said, and just to reiterate, I've got the wrong side of the fabric facing up. So the right side of the fabric is stuck to the mat and this is the fabric mat. So there's no extra support sheet on this and there's nothing ironed on to this fabric at all to stabilise it in any way. So I'm going to press start and let the machine draw my sew lines for me. Okay, so that's finished. So I can say, okay, I'm not touching the mat. The mat's still in the machine. I'm not doing anything at all with it. All as I'm going to do now is select where it says, please select. This time I'm going to choose cut. I'm going to take the pen out and just put the lid back on the pen so that it doesn't dry up. I'm going to get my fabric blade going to pull the protective cap off it and drop it into the machine and lock it in place. And now I'm just going to come back to the machine, going to hit start. Okay, so that's finished. So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to unload the mat. Okay, so hopefully you can see this now. So I'm just going to remove the waste from the mat.
and then I'm just going to gently peel away my four pieces which you can see have all cut beautifully and I've got my sew line on there. This is a really easy project if you've not cut fabric before and you've got the fabric mat and auto blade this is a really quick simple project for you to do. So now I'm going to put the protective cover back on my mat so that it doesn't get you know any more fluff or anything on it and one tip that I will give you here that I've been doing if there are not many fibers left on the mat I've literally been putting the plastic cover straight back on it but I've been making quite a few fabric projects recently using this mat and the new auto blade and some fabrics leave more threads on your mat than others and the way that I've been dealing with mine is I've been using a baby wipe but I've been using these huggies now this was just a chance uh, purchase in the supermarket because I normally use wipes alcohol free wipes to clean you know my regular mats but I was in the supermarket or oh, several months ago and these were the ones that literally were just on the shelf and I grabbed them it says the 99% pure water no perfume I've looked on the ingredients list and I can't see anything that mentions alcohol because you do need alcohol free wipes but these are Huggies Pure and the reason that I will definitely repurchase these over any wipes that I've used before are one, they are quite thick and some, some of the wipes that you buy are quite thin and some wipes are quite fibrous and these are not. And basically how I've been looking after my fabric mat is when I've used it, let me just turn it around so that hopefully you can see it a bit better trying to get the whole mat in for you I just take this wipe and I literally just rub the wipe over all of the mat where I've had my fabric and because these wipes are obviously damp they just pick up all the threads and the debris now you know this fabric didn't look as though it had left any any debris or anything behind but you can see, I'm not sure how well you'll see, but it does all stick to the wipe. And then I literally just turn it over and just do the same thing. Just gently, I'm not scrubbing. I am literally just wiping over the mat. And by doing this, it brings off all the bits of fibres that have been left behind, any loose threads that you know will be left behind when you're removing your fabric then wait for this to dry i would then put this on one side so by using the white you're not having to use your spatula or your scraper to scrape any threads up and then possibly you know dig into the adhesive that's on the mat just by gently wiping the dampness of the white picks up the threads so this then just goes on one side to dry and once it's dry i put the pre the protective cover back on it and then it's good to go for next okay, time. Okay, so I completed all the projects and here it is. And when I came to edit the video, everything after me taking the fabric off the scan and cut mat was just a black screen. So I, I don't know what happened. Something obviously went wrong with the recording. So I'm going to carry on from that point here now now i can't remember whether i told you but i'm using a continuous zip this zip's about eight inches long it doesn't really matter so long as it's bigger than your project and this was the point i'd got up to when i lost everything i'd, I'd cut the front and the lining and with the scan and cut and had the scan and cut draw the sew lines on so I'm just going to carry on now. So what you want to do is get one of your front pieces. I'm using the same fabric, but I just thought I'd point out that I'm literally having to start all over again. So one of your pieces of outer fabric facing up. The right side of your fabric facing down, lined up along the top. 
Then one of your pieces of lining, right side facing down, so the two right sides are together, and line it up with the top of your zip, and so that it lines up with the piece on the bottom, like so. Now you can pin or clip this if you want, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to put it under the machine. I've got my zipper foot already installed in the machine, but if you've not got a zipper foot, don't worry, just use a regular foot and just take your time. Just, you know, make sure that you don't go over the teeth. And I'm just gonna sew along this blue line. not bothered about doing a backward stitch and a forward stitch either end because when I come to sew this whole thing together those stitches will be sealed in with the seam all the way around. So this is what you've got now. So I'm just going to open it out, fold both pieces together and just finger press it. You can press it as you go if you want, but I'm just, just going to finger press this at the moment. Just make sure that you've now got wrong sides together with your zip sandwiched in the middle and then just finger press. And now I'm going to put this back under the machine and sew all along here. So that's how it's looking now. So with the right side of the outer fabric still facing up and your zip is now facing up, you need to get your other outer piece and line this up with the edges of this piece and along the top. Like so. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to get your lining piece again with the right side down and the drawn seam line facing up and line this up at the top and so it lines up on the sides and then you're going to pick the whole thing up you can pin or clip, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to sew. I'm going to pop it back under the machine and sew along the blue drawn line that the scan and cut put in for me. Okay, so now when I open this up and open up the back piece, I've got the two right sides together here and the two right sides together here. And I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to put this back in the machine and sew along this edge just to fasten this down. Okay, so that's how it's looking now. So this really is a simple, easy project because the scan and cut's done all the cutting and put the, the sewing lines in for you. And it literally is little pieces like this. This is nearly finished. So what you need to do now, this is the most important thing. I can take the clips off now. You need to open the zip to a, about halfway or three quarters of the way open at least. Then you want to pick up the two right sides and put those together and pick up the two linings and put those together. 
and you want to push your zip inwards. towards the lining. And then I would pin or clip for this bit. So I'm just going to put one clip at the top and then where my zip is folding in, I'm just going to put a clip to hold it. Now, on the other two that I made, when I got to this stage, I folded the zip towards the outer fabric, but for this one, I'm going to fold it towards the lining and see if it makes any difference on the finished look. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, you can either put your regular foot back on your machine or you can use your zipper foot if you want to. I'm just going to leave the zipper foot on and I'm going to sew all around this blue line that the scan and cut drew for me but I'm going to leave an opening. Now you don't want it to be too near your zip because you've got to sew this lining up once you've turned it all inside out and if it's too near the zip it's a bit of a devil to get under the machine. So I would start at least an inch away from where the zip is and then leave yourself maybe two and a half, three inches of an opening. You can mark it with a pen if you want to, or if not, just remember when you get to this point, stop, go back a few stitches, take it out of the machine, and then start again here. So I'm gonna start round here and come round, and then I'll show you what I mean. When you get to the part where the zip is, just take it nice and slow. If you're using a nylon zip, you can sew over it. But you just need to take your time. I tend to slow my speed down on my machine. If you've got a foot pedal, just do it nice and gently. I'm going to stop. I'm going to do a couple of back stitches. And then I'm going to take this out of the machine and then I'm going to come down here, maybe two or three inches and start again. So I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward, a couple back and then go all the way back round to where I started. If you have to stop and lift your presser foot up and adjust to do that it's you, you know it's not a problem you don't have to go around it all in one piece as long as you leave your needle down you can adjust as you go So now I can bring in my scissors and cut off the ends of the zip. And because I opened the zip into the middle before I started, I should be able to turn this out without any problem. So what you need to do now, you just need to find the opening and then start to pull 
the inside through. Now take your time, you, there's, you, there's no rush here. Just do it bit by bit, it will come through. And if you take your time, you won't rip your stitches. And then you can open the zip once you can get near it and pull all the outside all the way out. Then just poke your fingers in and bring out the shape of your coin bag. And then I like to use something like this big ball tool and pop it in and just go in and bring out the shape all around the seam. I've got a stray thread there, so I'm just going to cut that. Now I'm just going to give this a quick press and then I'll be back to show you the last bit. So just before I press it, what you need to do is, because you'll be able to see your drawn line, probably, if not, just guide it with your fingers. Make sure you've got the shape of the little coin purse. Tuck that seam in where you can see your scan and cut draw line and where you've left it open and just hit it with the iron and then you can do the outside while you're here but I am going to press it all again when it's sewn. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pop this back under the machine and just sew that opening closed and it doesn't matter that you sew, you can hand sew it if you want but you're not going to see it because it's going to be on the inside of your purse. So I'm just popping it back under the foot lining the edge of the foot up with the edge of the fabric. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches forwards and backwards and then come all the way around to where, just past where it's open and then just sew off. those couple of threads, push the inside lining now back into the purse and then just push out all the seams and then I'm going to give it a good press and it will be finished. Okay so there it is finished. So little coin purse, or you could just put a little lipstick or whatever you want, just a little purse just to keep inside your handbag if you just need some change for anything. So that's the first one I made. That's the one I made with the little Minnie Mouse head on that I was trying to position on the original fabric. And that's the one I lost the footage for and then this is the one now that I've just finished off. So I hope you like that project. Please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.